All right, guys, so we're gonna open this up for, for Q&A. As many questions as you have, please send them our way. I'm gonna go through uh, you know, where to stand in the batter's box, the proper stance, the, the proper uh, load, timing, getting through the ball. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of my favorite drills, but I want you guys to reach out with, with your questions, so please don't hesitate to ask. Um, first thing we're gonna talk about, where to, where to stand in the batter's box. You'll see a lot of young players, they stand way in the back because they're afraid. I mean, I've seen guys stand as, as close to this. So if you've got a group of hitters that have never played the game before, just real easy, okay? We usually wanna lay our bat down so that the end of our bat crosses home plate just a little bit. That's how close we wanna stand to home plate, okay? How wide do we wanna stand? An easy way, I always say nice and athletic position, kind of the same position you'd be in if you're fielding a ground ball, but you could just put the bat down in between their feet and that's kind of how wide they wanna be, right? It, there's no right or wrong. You're gonna see a lot of guys with closed stances, open stances, guys with leg kicks. If guys can hit, let them hit. All right, this is for your, your basic players that have not really played the game much before. So nice athletic position, about a bat, bat's length from home plate, nice and athletic. You wanna be able to jump from that position. Okay, now when we talk about the grip and holding the bat, a lot of players like to grip the bat really tight. Okay, their elbows are up, they're tight, they're tense. <clears throat> An easy way to teach them, take your pointer fingers, and when you point them, they should be close to pointing right at the sky or right at the ceiling. If they're crossed a little bit, that's okay, but we definitely don't want to be in this position. You don't want to be too tight. So, pointers right towards the sky. So we'll just rewind. About a bat length from home plate, nice athletic position. Take that bat, kind of put it on your right shoulder, and your pointer fingers should be somewhat towards the sky. If they're crossed a little bit, that's okay. And now we just want to lift the bat up somewhere behind our right ear, okay? My fingers are crossed a little bit. That's just more comfortable for me. Just make sure they're not here. All right, now, from here, I talk about the load a lot because the load is more important than the swing most of the time. You can have the best swing in the world, but if you're not on time, it doesn't matter, okay? So what the load is, is it's our timing as that pitcher is getting ready to throw the ball to home plate and what we do as that guy is throwing the ball. A lot of players, you'll see, they'll stand like statues. They'll wait till the last possible second, and then they'll do one of these, and they'll drop their hands. They re react to the pitcher instead of getting loaded. So an easy one that I like to do is I'll take a band. I'll take uh, the J bands that the pitchers warm up with, and I'll say, you wanna pretend that you have a rubber band between your hands and your front foot, so that when you stride, when you get loaded, we wanna try to stretch that rubber band out. Okay, and all the load is, is it's you getting your hands back as your, as, your, as your foot goes forward. So you could have a leg kick, you can have a toe tap, you can kind of just lift your front heel up and down, but there has to be some short, sort of a stretch going backwards before we go forward. All right, so just quick review, bat's length from home plate, nice athletic position about bat's length wide, feet wise, pointer somewhat towards the sky, bat right behind the right ear. Now, when that pitcher is getting ready to deliver the pitch, we want to load nice and smooth. So you can think that rubber band, you can tell your players, you know, think like you're shooting a bow and arrow, whatever they have to do to make sure when that pitcher delivers the pitch, when our front foot hits the ground, the knob of our bat is right at the catcher. That's the strongest spot to be. A lot of players you'll see, they'll drop their hands, they'll wrap that bat way around their head. Easy way, when their front foot hits the ground, the knob should be right at the catcher. That's a nice athletic position ready to launch. Any questions so far? Mike Helfer has a question. Mike Helfer says, is the leg kick important for everyone? Question mark. Is the leg kick important for everyone? No, I think it's just a timing mechanism. A lot of the, the younger guys like to do it because they see guys do it on TV. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, a, a common error I see is a lot of young players with a leg kick, they land in a different spot every time. Some guys will land open. Some guys will take a big long stride. I think if they're consistently landing, in the same spot every single time, I don't, I don't think the leg kick hurts. Might get them a little bit more momentum, a little bit more juice. I don't, I don't think anything is wrong with it. But no, it doesn't have to be for everybody. That's a great question. Clay Smith says, easy drill to not have the barrel lag behind. What's a drill to not have the barrel lag behind? Yeah, I, I see that a lot. A lot of players will drag that barrel way behind them. So one thing that I like to do, I'll just come over here to the red net. Have your players set up right up against the wall. They can do this in their living room, they can do it in the garage, they can use a bat or a wiffle ball bat. And when we get loaded and when we start our swing, the bat should never touch the wall behind us. 
that tells me right away that their bat's lagging or dragging behind them. So it's gonna teach them to have a, a nice short compact swing. So when they get to this position here, they practice their load. When they get here, as they start turning forward, that bat is gonna come close to the wall, but it should never actually touch it. So that's a good one. Uh, I've taken a tee and put it on a bucket before to make sure that they don't hit the tee, but putting something right behind them, a fence, just to make sure that that swing is nice, short and compact. Jason you know, Parker says, what's the best way to incorporate the lower half instead of all arms? How can we incorporate the lower half? That's perfect. I'm a, I'm a big believer in, in driving the backside or, uh, you know, you hear coaches say squish the bug or turn the hip or drive the knee. Um, once they get loaded and they get all the way back into a launch position, this is where we're going to start to generate some power. Okay, so I always like to say we want to think about taking our back knee and driving it through our front foot. A lot of coaches will say squish the bug, but if I just squish the bug and turn my back foot, I'm not really in a powerful position to drive. I'm kind of getting tall, I'm not really athletic. So I like to say, once you get loaded, you take that back knee and we start driving it down towards our front knee this way, that's gonna put us in a powerful position. You can tell them to keep the weight on the ball of their back foot. Um, I've taken a dodgeball before and put it between their feet, like a bigger dodgeball, to where they have to actually drive and get that back knee down. But that's a great question. You see a lot of players, they'll hit flat-footed uh, all arms. How do weight on the ball and then try to go opposite? Like, how do you weight on the ball when you have players that are out in front or lunging and kind of chopping? Like, how do you how do you stay back and, and drive with the ball? This is Tyler Wiley. Tyler Wiley is asking that. Yeah, Tyler, I think that's a great question. Matthew, can you grab me uh, like five or six baseballs? That's, that's a great question. I see a lot of players, especially younger players or you know 13 you guys moving up to the big field for the first time. 90% of outs are pull side ground balls. They're way out in front. So what I like to do is I like to take, this is actually one more baseball. Seven baseballs make up home plate, okay? Going all the way across. So what I'll do is I'll take the player. You got one more? I'll start with six. Thank you, perfect. So seven baseballs make up home plate. What I'll do is I'll take the player wherever they stand and I'll have them practice their load. So if this is where they feel strongest, I make a straight line from their front foot to the middle of home plate. That's where we wanna make contact right down the middle, just a little bit in front of our front foot. Then I'll take a straight line from their front knee straight across to the outside corner. That's where we wanna make contact with the outside corner. And then I just fill in, fill in the line here. So for seven different pitches, this is where we should be making contact and really taking the same swing. And again, it all depends on where their front foot lands. So if I land here, that's where I wanna make contact middle. You notice I get to contact, my back elbow is tucked, I'm strong here, front arm, front arm is, is slightly bent, and it's gonna be the same swing working all the way across. So ball number seven, all the way outside, same swing. Ball number six, five, four, three, two, and one. It's the same swing. So if you use a visual sometimes on the ground like this to show them where they wanna make contact, that'll help. Uh, a lot of it's timing too. So I'll tell my players, you know, we want to think middle of the field. We want to think opposite field or right center field. And that'll help them stay back a little bit longer too. A lot of guys are just in a rush to go out and make contact. Yeah, I mean, one other thing that I see a lot is, is guys rolling over. Players, players tend to get to the ball and they work straight across their body. So a couple drills I love to do. Quinn, you want to be my demo guy? Grab your bat. So Quinn's a lefty. So you guys might just have to slide on this side. Just in slow motion, get to me. A lot of times I'll see players, they'll get to contact and then they work directly across their body. So for Quinn being a lefty, I would tell him, you know, we gotta think dead center, think middle of the field, but we also gotta focus on once we get there, this top hand, this palm, we're in a palm up, palm down position. So just open up your hands for me right where they're at. So top hands facing the sky, bottom hands facing the ground. We wanna think palm up, palm down. You can hold the bat now. As long as we can, before we finish the swing. So you can do drills where you have your guys actually freeze at extension. You can have drills uh, where they'll actually take swings and they'll take the one hand off the bat and finish with their top hand pointed straight ahead, but focus on hitting through the ball and not just spinning and, and, and rolling over. Can you explain what it means to stay in the hitting zone? You know how we do the, the PVC pipe together where you, yeah. you swing and kind of stay on it? Yep. Kind of show a visual of what the, the chop or the... Perfect. You know, that kind so of we'll, actually, we'll actually stand sideways. Quinn, get your bat. Face uh, Coach Duke like he's a pitcher. Perfect. So you guys can see here, the pitch is always going to be coming down 
on a downward angle. Okay, so what we want, what we try to teach our hitters is we want our bat to match the plane of the pitch as long as we can. You'll see a lot of hitters when they start to swing, they chop straight down and straight up, or their bat drops straight down and they swing back up. But if this is the ball, right, and the ball's coming in on this angle, we want to try in slow motion, go ahead, turn the back foot. We want to try to stay on plane with the pitch as long as we possibly can. We don't want to chop in and out of the zone. This is giving you the most room for error. It's going to keep your bat in the zone longer. And now if you're a little bit late or a little bit early, it doesn't matter. You're still going to barrel it up. So again, in slow motion, get through it, through, through, and we want to try to stay on plane. Another great visual. You can use a pool noodle, a PVC pipe like this, but keep your bat through the zone as long as you possibly can. And then uh, a side toss station. The T is very, very overlooked. A lot of guys don't like using the T. We love it. We use it at the start of all of our lessons. We use it before games. Um, you've got to be able to hit off the T to be able to hit in the game. So one thing I always do is when I put the ball on the T, I'll take these two seams, kind of like they're rail railroad tracks, and I'll put it facing the hitter. The reason I do this is so that the hitter always thinks to hit the inside seam. Okay, most guys will get out and around the ball, they'll chop, but putting the ball on the tee like this with the two seams gives them the visual of hitting the inside half of the ball. We always wanna stay tight and compact. So railroad tracks, practice your load for me real quick. So Quinn would normally land right there. So I'm gonna put the tee working right down the middle, just in front of his front foot. He's gonna take some swings here. Good. So again, I'm putting that ball on the railroad tracks. He's thinking about driving through that inside seam and really focusing on getting through it. We're gonna do a couple swings here. I want you to freeze at extension. So slow motion, get to me. Now I want you to try to freeze in that position if you can. All right, this is a great one to focus on your guys getting through the ball. Perfect, freezing right at extension. He's fighting it a little bit. He's trying to work across his body, but we're trying to stay through it as long as possible. We're gonna do two more off the tee. Good, one more. Awesome. Another great drill I like to do for your guys that struggle getting into their legs. They might stand tall or they might, you know, not really use their lower half. I just call it the step back drill. So Quinn's going to start with both feet together. Same thing, ball set up like the railroad tracks. He's going to take a big step backwards and then take a full swing. And you can actually lift your front foot off the ground when you do it. Big hop and then let it fly. Perfect. So big hop back. And it kind of gets them the feeling of getting in that back hip, staying over their back leg a little bit longer and not lunging or, or jumping forward. What's a good drill? Marshall Young asks. Marshall Young, this is a good question. We get this asked this all the time. What's a good drill to teach confidence at the plate to younger players? Yeah, I, I think that's tough, especially in baseball and softball where you're going to fail a heck of a lot more than you're going to succeed. Uh, we had a convention a couple months ago where Dana Cavalea came in. He was a strength and conditioning coordinator for the Yankees in the World Series, and now he's a you know, motivation, motivational speaker. And he said, are you gonna focus on the three, or are you gonna focus on the seven? Because you're gonna get out, and if, you, this is one of, if you're one of the best players on the team, are you gonna focus on the three times you get a hit, or are you gonna focus on the seven times you get out? I think you have to have a short memory. You could, get a, you know, you could be two for two with two doubles, well, that third at bat, you've got to have the same amount of confidence as you do if you're 0 for 2 with two strikeouts, and it's tough. Uh, you know, Coach Duke, I remember he used to have like a little toilet bowl in, in the dugout uh, that you would actually press it and it would make the sound of flushing it. So you're flushing out any bat at bats. Um, but confidence-wise, I always teach aggressiveness. You know, go into the batter's box like you're ready to hit the ball hard. Uh, a lot of guys I see at younger ages, they try not to miss instead of trying to really do some damage. So get into the batter's box, you know, looking for fastballs, ready to hit early in the count. And uh, I think it's our job as coaches and parents to not get on our guys when they get out. Too often, you know, you got a, a coach yelling at the kid from third base, you got another dad standing behind the on-deck circle, you're throwing so many different mechanical ideas at him at once, he's like a robot at the plate. And he's not able to compete and have fun. So it's our job as coaches to instill that in them and you know, not hammer them down with mechanics, not hammer them down with drills and what they need to be doing. Remember, practice time is our time, game time is their time. So, you know, instill in them to, to play with confidence and believe in themselves and uh, focus on the three, not the seven. Next drill we're gonna do, side toss. This is uh, one that's used a lot and uh, it's, it's important that we do it correctly. The reason I say that, me as a coach, when I'm doing side toss with Quinn, I don't wanna just grab the ball and toss it at him because I'm trying to teach my hitter 
to have some rhythm and have some, uh, you know, some looseness in his swing. So if I just start like this and I toss the ball right at him, he can't get load, uh, loaded correctly. He gets jumpy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show him the ball. When I go down, he's going to get loaded back, and then he's going to swing. So again, it's kind of simulating the same thing. When the pitcher's getting his arm ready to throw, I'm going to show him the ball, soft on the way down, and then go forward. So he's focused on when I go down, he goes back and gets loaded, and he's taking a good aggressive swing. When we're tossing this ball, try to aim for his front hip pocket. Don't toss the ball too deep or you're gonna end up wearing one right in the teeth. All right, we wanna toss the ball right towards his front pocket, and it's gonna give him an idea of where he wants to be making contact. It's a great one. Uh, you, can, you can create stations at practice and actually use wiffle balls. Use like the mini, uh, mini smush balls or squish balls and have players do this to each other but make sure they're doing it correctly. It seems stupid, but if you got a kid that's just tossing the ball all over the place, nobody's getting better. Show them the ball, slow on the way back, front hip, and now guys are getting reps. So a lot of times you guys will get to the cage before the game, or you might not even have a batting cage. You know, get, get some of these smush balls, get a net like this, and create stations before the game. Get your guys as many swings as possible. You don't want just a, a line of 11 kids waiting to hit in the cage while you got one guy throwing batting practice.